tonight, that we honor God for you tonight. Thanking God for you tonight. Our friend and our brother is coming. A great man of God, I thank God for. But I sincerely honor God for. Praise be to God. Been knowing him since I was in my 20s, an amazing man of God. Many gifts and talents. Praise God. You can read his bio in your handout that you get tomorrow. For right now, he's a man of God for this hour. A husband, a new father, and a new pastor. Praise be to God. A new pastor and founder of Fuel Station Church. And we are honored of God to have him back in our midst. Come on, keep worshiping, keep worshiping, keep worshiping, keep telling him thank you. We're going to receive our friend and our brother this time. Pastor Nathan Salter. Celebrate God as he comes. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Hallelujah. Wow. What an awesome spirit in here. Person. 
So I actually was, you know, earlier this week, I was like, okay, Lord, you uh, gave, you know, this is, I think this will be a blessing. And y'all know as leaders, y'all know how the Holy Spirit do. He'd be like, um, go right here. I'm like, yes, Lord. Now, I will tell you, this is going to bless your socks off, so get ready. <laughs> You're going to be so blessed tonight with this because it does deal with leadership. And it humbled me. It humbled me so much because, um, <laughs> you know, I was one of the people who, uh, you know, many of you probably were like me, you know, you just want to serve God so bad. You just, you know, you know, you take the scripture, whatever your hands find to do, do it. So I would just get involved in every ministry that was possible and then come to realize that I wasn't called to some of them. I was busy doing the wrong thing. So I just want to start off before I get into this good juicy work. Can I give y'all like a, a salad before the main course? <laughs> now the salad is going to be good, so I hope you got your spiritual pork out. Because there is a scripture that says, except the Lord build the house, Psalms 127. They that labor, laboreth in vain. And the thing about this, we just did a teaching series in our ministry about it, because I'm seeing that with that scripture, it says, except the Lord build the house. They that laboreth is doing it in vain. So I had to ask some questions about the scripture. If God is building this house, then how could the laborers be doing something in vain? And the answer finally came to me. There's a story in the scriptures where there were some four guys who ripped off the roofs to bring a sick man down to see Jesus. I know that story, right? Yeah. They pull it off the roof, taking the nails out, let the guy down into the house. But did anybody ever wonder what would happen if that would have been the wrong house? <laughs> they did the laboring. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but when they got the man down there, Jesus wasn't in that building. Mm -hmm. That's what labor and pain looks like. That I am in something that I'm working hard that God did not call me to work in. Oh, Lord, this is going to get deep. So, what I'm learning is that before I take up a hammer, I used to do construction work. So, before I take a, a hammer and start nailing, I need to make sure that I'm nailing the wrong. The, the right wall. I'm hammering the right nail because I could be laboring, moving, sweating, and nailing somebody else's stuff. So if we look at this beautiful building, which is amazing, you go see wisdom all through this because you have seen that certain things came in at a certain time. They couldn't have come in first. This carpet could not have been laid first. So the carpenter would have gotten impatient to put the carpet in first before the foundation. He would have labored in vain. Even though he was gifted to do carpet. Wow. Mm. Wow. That's good. Come on. So we can be gifted, but not a season. Isn't that something? Oh, yeah. oh. oh. That's good. You know how many people gifted sometimes doing something, but they labored in vain. And the master builder, remember, except the Lord built the house, the one who's trying to build the house is saying, I never told you to lay the carpet. And the person is like, I'm doing this for the Lord. And the Lord is like, um, can you wait for me to tell you when to do your role? It kind of looks something like when John the Baptist was on the scene. And then Jesus Christ appears at 30. I know that would have been some of us. I'm the Messiah. I want people to know who I am at 15. Jesus said,
said, I got to wait for the perfect timing because he's building something. And if I come on the scene too soon, I'm going to mess up the whole building project. So God brings people together for one building project. The problem is the devil fights the individual parts. <laughs> so the people, the right people who need to be in the right spot won't be in the right spot. so beautiful, but you notice that the thing that's holding them up behind it ain't getting no nobody's pointing at them, nobody can even see them. But they doing more. <laughs> but you know, nobody said nothing about what I'm doing. God said, I'm the one building this thing. I just need you to stay behind that white thing and shh. And hold up the thing that I told you to hold up. And you will get rewarded for that. For that. Not for what you want to do. For that. And that's what changed my life, Pastor. Because I used to just say, oh, I want to be this. Oh, I want to be this. Oh, oh I want to be this. I'm going to be The Lord says, sit down and listen. Figure out what did I give you? Because if you don't know what I've given you, you could be the greatest disruption to a ministry. So I'm going to show you three servants that we're going to get our leadership principles tonight. Now y'all ready for the, the, real, the real food? <laughs> I know, right? That was just a salad. But let's get to the meat. Because the meat is where the Holy Spirit is going. Even myself, every time I see this passage of scripture, I humble myself and I say, Lord, please, this thing is too serious for us to be playing. My God. My How many of you know Christ is coming back? We all know that. The problem is nobody here know when. Which means everyone in this room have one thing in common. We all know he's coming back. But the problem is we all have different agendas why we are occupying until he come. And what we want to do today as leaders is we want to get back to a place of saying, you know, Lord, let me really pray. Because I know you brought me to this mission. I know you brought me to this awesome man of God, this awesome pastor to serve. But Lord, help me to not come and be a disruption. Help me to know where I fit in your building project. Because if I do that, I'm going to hear you one day say, well done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not well done just because you wore a long dress or you have a big church hat. It's well done that you held up that white thing. And you held it up without complaining. You held it up. Even when nobody called your name, you just kept holding it up. He said, I'm going to reward you for that faithfulness. Please turn to Matthew 25. Now let's get some dinner. <laughs> this is going to be juicy. <laughs> so, I believe this is going to be a blessing to you. And the reason why I believe it's going to be a blessing to you is because this is where the Holy Spirit led me. Um, I was definitely going to go to a different direction, but he said, I need you to go here. So, there's some lessons we need to learn, and I just pray that. Um, we all believe what the Holy Spirit has given to us. Um, I did bring, um, um, as we are getting to the scripture, I did bring a few of uh, my books with me. If you would like, you can grab those afterwards. I got my Beauty Has No Boundaries books. And with anybody out there who's single, uh, seven things single should accomplish before marriage, I got that with me. And I also have a uh, USB drive of over like, 50 hours of single seminars on this thing. Uh, so you can get these. There's only a few. But you can see me afterwards if you'd like that. Let's get to the good stuff. Matthew 25. I want to start at verse 14. I'm going to read for a second. Um, and I, you, you, you like the Bible in here, right? 
I know you like the Bible because you have a Bible preaching pastor who got Bible scriptures quoting out of him every time you walk. <laughs> <laughs> so I know y'all love the word. We're going to be talking about scripture tonight, but I just need you to see these principles that we as leaders are going to take. Verse 14 says, for the kingdom of heaven is as. So is as means a comparison. Okay, The kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called unto his own servants. Everybody say servants. Servants. And delivered unto them his goods. Please say his goods. His goods. Now, just from the first, just from verse 14, we realize that there is a master, he has servants, and the servants did not bring the master anything. The master gave the servants some of his stuff. We see that. Now let's go to verse 15. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to, everybody read that next part. His ability. That's deep. So the master already know what you can handle. <laughs> he already know. He's like, that one right there, they, I just need them to just, them just do this one thing. I don't know. They can't handle no more. They, they get anything else. They go crack. He knows. So he says, according to your ability, he gave these. Now, this, watch this part. It says in verse 15, to everyone according to his own ability, and straightway he took his journey. Verse 16, then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Verse 17, and likewise he that had received two, he also gave two other. Verse 18, but he that had received one went and digged it in the earth, and his his Lord's money. Verse 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. Verse 20. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou gavest me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. Verse 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Let's give the guy with the five talents a hand real quick. He, he, did, he did good. Yeah, so, sermon number one, you know, take some notes with him. He, he, he's good. So we see that this is the kind of servant the master like. So let's go to the next servant. Verse 22. He also that have received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliver some me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Verse 23, his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Let's give the man, the servant with the two talents a hand. Okay, let's get to the last guy. Verse 24, but then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not strawed. Verse 25, and I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, thou, there thou hast that is thine. Verse 26, his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest where I reap, where I reap, where I sow thy, and gathered where I have not straw. Verse 27, thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Verse 28. Take therefore the talent from him and give it to him which have ten talents. Verse 29, for every unto everyone that hath been given, he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even which he hath. Now let me just talk to you real quick a little bit about the kingdom. Because this is what we are working for. He's talking about this parable. He said the kingdom of heaven is as. So he's using that comparison about pretty much how he looks at things. God is building something. He says in Matthew chapter 16, upon this rock, I will build my church. Okay, so it's clear that there is something being built. But we also know that there is a kingdom that is coming. Christ Jesus will be coming. We, you know, we, we call it the second coming. He will be ruling and reigning for a thousand years in the millennial reign. Read that in Revelation chapter 20. You got the new heaven and new earth in 21 and 22. So there is going to be a kingdom coming. But the funny thing about this is he before he comes back, 
He wants his culture to be established here before he makes his arrival. Come on. So this is why we have the ecclesia, the church, which you see today. So this is why we're worshiping, this is why we're praising, this is why we have order, this is why we have all that, because he is actually saying, y'all go ahead and set a culture so when I come, the nations will already get a sense of what it's going to be like. Come on, come on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope that may have more of this. <laughs> so with that in mind, he's trying to say, listen, there is going to be a day that those who are serving him will be rewarded. Mm. So, this is all the stuff that we're doing here at the churches and stuff like that. You know, you ever got that, that song back in the day, Baby is coming in after a while. You remember that song? Yeah, yeah. Get your time, and baby is coming up a while. It is coming up a while. You are going to get paid according to your thing, the things that God has called you to do. Now, these three servants shows us something about serving, especially in ministries, especially in the kingdom. What they show you is that they show you three different attitudes. And the first guy, I used to like the guy with the five talents more than anyone. Because when he gets his five talents, he just goes out and he begins to multiply. But the thing I want you to see is that if I was the devil, the first thing that I would attack these three guys with is I would try to get them to not know what was given to them. Because if they don't know what they got, how can you multiply what you can recognize? <laughs> so his number one attack on everyone in this room is don't discover what was given to you. Because those people, if they don't know what they have, guess what it's in, it's, it's in it's innate in this body. Guess what we had, we just do off by default when we don't know what we got? We start wanting what you got. <laughs> <laughs> so the devil is so smart that all he got to do after Christ gives you the talents is make you ignorant of the talents. So you walking around here with five talents and don't even know the five. What am I supposed to do? Pastor, can I, can I sweep the floor? And you're supposed to be leading the worship, but you, you don't even know you got that. Mm. Because he already, because the devil told you, you, don't, you can't do this. So his number one attack is to blind you from what was given. So the guy with the five, I like him because you know what he said? He said, I know what I got. And the thing I love about the guy with the five, my brother, he didn't wait for the other two before he got busy. Amen. Come on, come on. Amen. Yeah. He got his five and he jet and get them working immediately. And guess what the scripture says? And he multiplied. Took the five and he doubled it and brought that ten. So he was wise enough to know my master wants me to multiply what he gave me. That's attack number two. The first attack is don't know what you got. Then the second attack is know what you got, but don't multiply it. Come on, come on. Don't use it to be a blessing. Wow. Uh-oh. Wow. Lord have mercy. I'm gifted, but I ain't using this gift of this church. Mm -hmm. I ain't helping the pastor out. Nope. I know what I got can help take this ministry to the next level, but I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to multiply what God has given me. And the funny thing about it, the guy with the five, he was so good, he went out, did his thing, didn't wait. But I'm going to be honest, my favorite one is the guy who got the two. And I'll tell y'all why I like the guy who got the two. Y'all got to say, why? Why? <laughs> Okay, since y'all want to know so bad, I'll tell you. <laughs> you know why I, will, I like the guy with the two? The guy with the two is something, is really the, the guy we're going to study today. Let me tell you why. There was a guy before him who got five. He leaves. The 
Next in line, next servant comes. And the master gives him two. The reason why I like this guy, because he didn't get the two and say,
I got it. I, you know, I was like, Lord, you know, give him a pass or something. Because, I mean, let's look, look at what he said. Let, let's listen to what the man said. And y'all tell me if this seemed bad. Let's, let's go to verse 24. Look at this. He says, then he which I received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee. Uh-oh. So this servant did know the Lord. It starts off with him saying, I knew thee, meaning I knew what you want. I knew what you want. He's telling him, he's telling the master, I already knew what you wanted me to do. I already knew you talk, called me to, to, to preach, Lord. I already knew it, but I just, you know, the Netflix series is so hard to stop watching. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the word. I knew thee that thou art a hard man. Look at reaping where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not strung. Look at verse 25. And I was afraid and hid thy talent in the earth. Now, watch this, y'all. This is where I'm like, Lord, you got to give him a pass. He says, Oh, there thou hast that is thine. Meaning, what he was saying is, the thing you gave me, I still have it. This is what he said. I got it. It's buried. It's protected. Wow. Nobody stole it. I'm thinking, okay, well, God, you gotta give the guy a pass. At least he gave it back. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm worried, I'm like, why is he so mad that this guy is giving it back to him the same way he gave it? Because in the kingdom, God don't never want you to give nothing back the way he gave it. <laughs> So if you are in the kingdom as a leader and you're thinking, I'm just going to give God just enough, on that day, when we stand before the Lord, don't expect to hear well done because he's only going to say that to people who multiply. Multiplication is the, is the kingdom culture. <laughs> it's the only thing. This proves it. In the kingdom, he does not want you to give him the same thing he gave you back the same way. I'm clear about that. When he made Adam, the first thing he told him, when he made the first thing he says, be frugal and so the problem was they got in the garden and said, Well, you know, we don't multiply and all that, but let's kind of do what we want to do in this garden you put me in. That was the issue. I put you there for multiplication and now you cutting the food. <laughs> Eating from trees I told you not to eat. <laughs> so if you look all through the Bible, the servants that it represents Christ the right way, that's why God is so about building. He's so much about multiplication. So the guy with the one talent, he says, I was afraid. Is anybody here afraid of what God has given you? Just to check it. Okay. Let's tell the truth and shame the devil. <laughs> Look, we all, listen, tonight we all will leave here multiplying tonight. Who in here will confess that you know God gave you something and you have not started multiplying yet? I, I can actually commit the people raise their hand. You know why? Because once you get understanding of that, hey, now you can start multiplying it. The scariest ones are the ones who don't want to admit it, which means they go leave out here and never multiply because it's not even in their brain to even try because they are afraid. This man took enough energy to go in his backyard and get a shovel and go, took the talent. So he was laboring in vain. That sweat. I'm just a digging for the Lord, right? And then take the thing God gave him and said, Do God understands my heart. Oh God knows my heart. Now the funny thing about all three, they all knew he's coming back. They all knew it. And the man was content knowing that talent was in the back. 
Now, I'm going to tell you why that guy was so mad about it. Because in the back, where it's hidden, where nobody don't know that song that you wrote. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You know, nobody don't know that book that's in you. You know, that thing. Oh, Lord, help us. <laughs> yeah, that one. That talent. <laughs> it's in the back. Now, watch this. The master was mad because he said, Why didn't you just give it to me or take it to? The exchangers, because at least they will make a profit off of it. He was more, God was more thinking about the profit. He was like, just give it to somebody else. Now the funny thing about this story, the guy was like, um, but I was afraid, you know, I, I know your will, I know your way, I know how you think. So I'm just gonna leave this thing here because I'm one of the servants that just want to love you and just sing all day, and but never do what you call me to do. And, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep singing and singing and singing, but never read your word. Don't know your purpose in my life. I'm just gonna keep going to church. I'm just gonna keep that. I'm just gonna ask the pastor to pray for me every day because I don't pray myself. I'm gonna do all these things, and then when you come back, I'm just gonna expect you to take. Because this is not about feeling. The problem with this, 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 the problem with servants is servants serve by feelings. Oh. People, kingdom, kingdom servants don't serve by feelings. They serve by knowledge. They have knowledge of his will. Do y'all know if Pastor and First Lady had to serve by feeling, do y'all really believe they'd probably be here right now? <laughs> <laughs> Raise your hand if y'all ever felt, I don't know y'all, if y'all ever felt like saying, I quit. Look, look at, woo, look at, a man, man. <laughs> All of us was like, listen, Lord, if it was left to feeling, but what made us still get up and say, I'm going to do what God called us to do is the knowledge of his will. <laughs> So now you understand why the devil tried to keep leaders from reading their Bible. Come on, come on. Oh, come on. Yeah. He don't care if you know all of Ty Tribbett's music. Just don't know the scriptures. Because in the scripture is the knowledge. Come on, come on. My people is destroyed, not because of lack of music. I'm telling y'all from example, I'm telling y'all from experience because I, I'm a musician, I understand. Guess what? I've done it. I did all of this stuff I was playing, and guess what? I can actually say this now because I'm free. But I know what it's like to be playing and chanting and, and you in bondage. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to play a shower with my brothers dancing, and you go home convicted, feeling like, Lord, if Jesus, I died tonight, I don't know when I'm going to see you. Which means I got my connection to God through my plan. But when he spoke to me, I didn't recognize his voice. He says, My sheep knows my voice. I wasn't reading. I didn't know what he was talking like. I didn't know, I can differentiate it was me, the devil, uh, the, the neighbor, I didn't know who was talking to me. But what I'm trying to tell you is, when I started getting in this word, I started saying, Lord, show me your will for my life. Show me your plan. Show me what you want. I began to start reading, and I started reading the heart of God. I started reading about the kingdom. I started about understanding Jesus' heart. Jesus, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, hold up. I've been building falsely. I've been building the wrong thing. I've been trying to give him something he didn't ask for. I, mean, I was so committed to give God something he never told me to give him. So the guy with the two talents, when he gave him the two talents and multiplied, the Lord looked at the two, he said, okay, I gave you these two and you multiplied. Wow, well done, because you multiplied exactly what I gave you. But the one with the one shows us that he tried to give God what he Felt. And you know how many servants do this? I'm going to start a ministry. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Didn't even pray. We didn't even see God about it. 
Before I, before a few years in church even opened, I think I'm just gonna tell you, gosh, but I was, I was just loving them. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm born and bred from Great Rector stuff, but I'm like, man, I'm good. Here's the word my pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, you know, associate pastor there in the music ministry. I'm like, I'm good. I've been here for almost 30 something years. I'm like, I'm good. I can stay here till Jesus comes. And then all of a sudden, I'm feeling this. I said, Oh Lord, no. I don't want to do it, Lord. It took me almost eight months. Just to say yes, Lord. Can I be honest? Come on, man. I, I, y'all could have probably said y'all on the first day, but me, I was like, mm-hmm. I don't want to do it. And all I kept thinking about was a guy with the one talent. <laughs> so watch this. If I would have recorded another album, if I would have wrote another book, but did not open that church, and, and I would have been standing before the Lord, my sister. Y'all would be down here on earth reading books, but I will be rejected up in eternity. Because I built wrong. Now, can I tell you one more kingdom principle? Jesus says something to the guy with the one talent that blew my mind. And this is the principle because I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, is this only going to be when, you know, I know this is a type of child, but it, 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 he says, I'm like, this, this, is, this, is my, this is my nature. I'm into multiplying. You know what he showed me? I don't want y'all to see this. Go to Matthew 25. I'm going to close in a minute. I just sense that we're going to worship for a second. But let me just give you this because I, I, I feel like there's gonna, we're going to get back to a place of prayer and seeking God on where we're supposed to be. Mm. Look at what he says in verse 28. Take therefore the talent from him and give it to him which have ten talents. Verse 29, for everyone that have shall be given, and he shall have abundance, but from him that have not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. Now, I gotta show y'all this. This is about the, around the time that I, I uh, knew um, your amazing pastor. When I first started off in music, I was doing drums. And I played drums and just, that was just my thing, right? And I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden I had this desire to start playing the keyboards. It came out of nowhere. And I'm like, what is, I'm good, I don't know. We had like three keyboard players at the church at the time. So I just started learning my skills, practicing myself, taught myself, and whatever. So I'm playing, and come to find out um, some transitions that happened, and I began to be the keyboard player at the church. And later on, <laughs> Lord help me. Later on, I I couldn't understand it because I started I started asking myself, I said, Where did this gift come from? Did I already have this? And you know what the Lord showed me? Oh, got ready for this. There are some things that's being downloaded to multiplying folk and explain. If this brother right here is doing what God called him to do, and he's multiplying, and let's just say this sister is multiplying with her too. And let's just say this sister right here, she's the one with the one, and she's just like, I'm not, I'm gonna bury my talent. In the spirit, because this is a kingdom principle. Heaven will take what was given to her and give it to the one who multiplies it. And one day he's just sitting there saying, why do I got this gift all of a sudden to write a book? That gift was deposited into him because she neglected it. So that little gift of playing piano, it was because there was three other people who said, I'm going to bury mine. Wow. So let me give it to the one who's multiplying his one. So it is possible that if you keep burying what God has given you, let me just take that from you. Here, let me give it to somebody who's going to do something for my kingdom with it. And there's a lot of people right now. The most disgruntled people I've seen 
is people who is sitting in the audience looking at a person on stage doing what they were supposed to be doing. Mm. 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 Yeah, I know that feeling. That person up there ministering, that person up there singing, and it was supposed to be you. But because we buried it, he said, let me give it to a person who don't even have to get to sing it. I'm going to make them start singing all of a sudden. Then that person started hitting notes on them. I didn't like to see. Well, because somebody in the pew, one of the kingdom servants said, I, I'm not singing at that church. Oh, I, I'm just grabbing this Okay. People don't believe that happens in the kingdom culture. It is very clear right there. Take the talent from him, from the one who ain't doing nothing. Give it to the one who knows how to multiply. And it's funny, because the one who had the five talents, who got this new talent, he didn't ask for that new talent. He was like, oh, Lord, I just, uh, I just took five and made ten. Can you give me another one? <laughs> That's why the fear of the Lord is coming back to the body of Christ. Because when people understand that Jesus Christ is coming soon, they will stop playing around with their talents. So if you want to see what it really looks like to please God, because I know everybody here wants to please God. I'm clear about that. I can sense that. You wouldn't even be here on a Friday night if you didn't want to. We all want to please God. The only problem is we sometimes forget who we are doing this for. We are going to be standing before the Lord one day to give an account of all of this stuff, all this ushering and, and being and, and doing this and all this stuff. Is, we're going to give an account one day for all of this. And I, God forbid, I do not want to be up there preaching every week telling people you're going to make it God is going to bless you you're going to do this and then get before the Lord the Lord said I never called you the pastor so the folks I'm preaching to they made it but no I'm standing before him like but, but I helped your kingdom out but I did not make you for that Mr. Microphone yeah <laughs> I made you to be held and spoken into, but you took it upon yourself to be a camera. And you lived your whole life on earth frustrated because now you are trying to conform into something you was not made to be. Now you're changing the way you look, you're changing the way you think, all because you are out of purpose. He did, when he made a camera, he said, I want you, I'm coming back for a camera. I want that camera to have taken a lot of pictures. I want that camera to have snapped a lot of things because I made it to do that. So when I come back, I don't want the camera to start telling me why they didn't take pictures. And the scary part, and I keep saying this, is that nobody in here know when the master is coming. That's the scary part. And we keep thinking we got time. So when the pandemic hit, that's what woke me up. Because I started seeing a bunch of my friends. One of my friends was so crazy about it. We were doing a revival in New York City when the COVID first hit. March of 2020. We were in New York City when it broke out. So we come back. We were with my friend, um, Elder Reggie Brown. We were all out that same night, get back home. He died the next day. Wow. And we're talking about coming. I don't know what we're talking about now. One day we go see the Lord. His, he didn't know his expiration date was tomorrow. Jesus. And we, and the devil is trying everything to get the, that's why Jesus, when he prays in John chapter 17, his number one prayer is that we will all be one. Yeah. Now, he kept praying it the whole time. Yeah. Lord, let them be one as we are one. 
let them be one. You know why he was saying that? Because he said, I know how the devil is going to attack my servants. And the way to keep them from being one is to let the guy with the two talents get jealous of the guy with the five. Now the guy with the two won't talk to the guy with the five because he thinks that he, you know, I don't got, I don't got what you got. No, don't talk to me. You see what's happening? Now we have the vision. Now we have almost over two something thousand denominations. You mean to tell me the devil hasn't been smart? He is very smart. We have a church on every corner, and half of them don't even talk to each other. Jesus, help us. He's doing a good job. <laughs> and we're doing all this foolishness, and Jesus is like, right. on my way back. <laughs> on my way back. And I'm only looking for servants who's multiplying. And, and so everybody's, Lord, when is the Lord coming back? When is, when is it? You know? And God is like, he's looking out at us and he's like, if I can just get a couple of servants like the guy with the five talent, I could just get a couple of like the guy with the two talent. Maybe I can come sooner because, but right now there's too many people with the one talent down there who's burying their stuff. So there's a lot of this stuff buried. So we are sitting here, so the world is like, where's the church? Where are these people who profess the Christ? I will be shocked, you will be shocked at the person you sit next to right now. You will be shocked at the things that God put inside that person. <laughs> you will be amazed if you saw in that person what God sees. So at the service, I'm going to shake all y'all hands because I, I ain't stupid. Y'all are some blessed folk. And I'm honored because guess what? It's only one of you. And I get to shake your hand. I get to be here with you tonight. I don't take that for granted. But I do know one thing. We ain't going to be here long. And the thing that God has given you, I am just telling you right now, and the thing I love about God he gives you these talents. If you read Ephesians chapter 4, it says he gives some apostles, pastors, teachers, you know, prophets, and vengeance, right? And then he starts talking about for the edifying of the perfecting of the saints. And then he starts talking about the parts. About how the parts, how the body should fitly join. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So Amazing pastors like him doing things like this. What he is really doing, God is using him to do is to say, listen, I need the, the leaders here in this region, in this area, in this ministry to start to understand that we're working for a kingdom. And the king is coming soon. So whatever issues we got, let's get rid of it and stop burying what God and bring them talents and let's start multiplying for God's kingdom. So I tell you, if I, again, I am so clear that the number one thing the devil is doing for us is trying to get us to be the guy with the one talent who buries it out of fear. You know you have something that can be a blessing to this ministry, more than what you've been given. And sometimes we just say, I'm not. Mm -mm. He the pastor, he didn't do everything by himself. I can tell you right now, as sure as I sit here, when I spend time alone with the Lord, I cannot shake it. I cannot shake it as much as I want to shake it, as much as I want to act like I'm not hearing it, but I keep hearing, I am coming soon. I hear, I be hearing it so much sometimes that I'm like, Lord, it's almost like everything, everything is. And when I say he's coming to remember, he's, he is coming back. He wants his culture here. And he gives his servants, he brings his servants. That's just like in this parable. He left them with talents and he left. He was gone. And the servants did the work. Then he came back and rewarded the servants for the work during the gap. So the funny thing about it was, 
Here he's coming. He's given us sign. He's showing us in many ways that he's coming. And the devil is pretty much like, you know what? I get it. Jesus says upon this rock he's going to build his church and the gates of hell is not going to prevail against it. So since the gates of hell can't prevail, let me bring confusion. Let me bring a lack of identity. Let me bring a lack of purpose amongst the parts in the body. So when they come together, they don't even understand the other part. Every single time I see unity, I always see proper placement. The reason why this is, you don't see the pews fighting with the lights on the screens is because the pews know its place. The lights know its place. The, the carpet knows its place. Everything knows its place. That's why there's so much unity in this room. It's that everything knows, everything is there for a purpose. It's only when we get God's people together, the devil says, you need to do this, you need to do this. And he tried to get us to take somebody else's talents. <laughs> so I'm going to take the guy with the five talents because I don't like the fact that God gave him five. So I'm going to take one of his talents and I'm going to show him that I can do better with his five. Mm. You see how this is, and this is why sometimes you see the, uh, the issues in church. So I, I, I speak to a lot of leadership things. And I can tell you right now, um, as, a, as a, a, a music instructor, as a, every time you see harmony, every time you see, it's because everybody is fitting in their parts. But when you start to see people not liking their part, not operating correctly in their part, you will see disharmony, confusion, and all of, that's why we use these three servants as our guide tonight, because they will show you the mindset. So I'm here to let you know that the person that I want you to go home and study is the guy with the two. He is going to show you so much about attitude. He's going to show you so much about humility. He's going to show you so much on how to serve. He's going to show you so much about how focused he is on the master's will. He shows you everything. I get a lot of leadership principles from this guy. And this is what I'm encouraging you to do. So, I'm going to ask everybody here. Since we all know, we all know it, we just don't know when. Since we all know that we have an expiration date, as I call it at the church, we all have an invisible expiration date. Just last Saturday, we had to funeralize somebody. Was only, I think it was 16. 16 years old. I don't think nobody knew that his expiration date was a few days before. And I can tell you right now, once we leave here, at some point when we stand before the Lord, I want everyone here to please hear well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You serve with Pastor Dre. I called you to that ministry and you serve well. You did what I put you there to do. I'm going to bless you for that. I just pray that no one in here allow the enemy to make you get tired of holding up that white thing. That you just be content with the two talents God gave you. <coughs> Let's just close our eyes real quick. Let's just reverence our king for a second because I sense that what I'm asking for tonight is that each one of us would ask God for a second. Father, please reveal to me the talents you've given me. This is one of the most important questions you want to ask tonight. What did you give me, Lord? <coughs> I want to start multiplying, but I need to know what I got. So in his presence for a few moments, I'm just going to give you this time to really just talk to the Lord. Let the Lord begin to show you. Because you may start to realize that you have, you may provide, bring something else to help the man of God out here. 
that nobody even knew you had. Nobody at the time knew that I could, I had songs in me, that I would be the one that would help our church record the first album. Nobody knew that was in me when I was over there playing. But once those talents are revealed, get to multiply. Let's ask the Lord, Lord, please reveal, reveal your assignment. 